Welcome back to Packet Loss. We'll be building upon the previous video in the series, which covered the basics of security policy cleanup and how to move towards app ID based policies. Today, we'll be diving into the policy optimizer tool, which we briefly touched upon in our last video. For those unfamiliar, Policy Optimizer is a tool that was released in PanOS 9.0 and introduced on the fly policy analysis with built in features to remediate those findings. You can use this tool to migrate policies from service based ports to app ID based rules provision overly permissive app ID rules, troubleshoot existing rules, and identify unused rules. Keep in mind, Policy Optimizer can be used on any type of rule, not just security policies. There are also additional features if you have a valid SAS security license, but that won't be covered in this video, so I'll link an article below for details on that. To access this feature, navigate to the Policies tab on the bottom left hand side, you're going to see Policy Optimizer. As I said before, this feature is shown for all types of policies. For the purposes of our training today, I'll be covering this tool strictly for security policies, but the same principles apply to other types of policies as well. New App Viewer will identify new app IDs and policies that were previously unknown or unidentified. Look at the days with no new apps and sort by ascending, in this case we're sorting by ascending, the lower the number you'll notice when selecting compare, new app IDs will be seen and will show you when they were first identified. So under the case on first scene versus last scene. Rules without app ID controls will identify existing security policies that are currently not using application based controls. Per Palo Alto's best practices, it is strongly advised that you can enforce all security policies with app IDs as to enforce a stronger security posture. In our case, I have a quite a handful of policies that are using non app ID based permissions. So what I want to do is actually select one of these in our case, internal WLAN lab 001. And if I click on app seen under that column, it's going to show me what app IDs have been seen. So in this case, I'm seeing three different app IDs, nothing that's unknown, which is a good sign. But what I want to do is instead of leaving this broad and overly permissive as an any any on this policy, what I'm going to do is click on this checkbox for the columns for ping NetBIOS, and DHCP and then match usage. So it's going to bring those into the policy and click OK. And now it's going to be removed from the rules without app controls and I can commit those changes. But what that has done is essentially said, I am taking away from the overly permissive any any on service and app ID. And now I'm moving towards a strictly app ID based approach. And if I actually look for that policy, so if I go to policies, let's go back to security. So in this case, it's going to be WLAN dash lab. If I scroll down, 001, there it is. You'll notice it actually changes your service tab to application default to force the predefined ports that are seen in the app IDs as well. Unused apps will show you rules that are currently permitting more app IDs than necessary. In our case, on this top policy, Palo Alto updates 001, we're permitting 15 different Palo Alto app IDs. However, only six of these are actually seen. So what we can do is again, Hit that little checkbox, match usage, and it's going to eliminate the ones that are unused. We click OK, and now that's actively mitigating all of the problems that we were seeing with being overly permissive. And again, all we would have to do at this point is just commit those changes, and it goes into effect. Log forwarding for security services identifies all rules that are missing a log forwarding profile. Enabling log at session start or end does not affect this feature. In our case, all rules are missing a log forwarding profile as I don't have one set up currently at this time, but I will in the near future. To show you how to add one, simply select a policy. In this case, I've selected deny region 001. And down below on the bottom left hand side, you'll see attach log forwarding profile. If I select this, it's going to ask me, where do you want to add a log forwarding profile to this policy? And which one do you want to add? In this case, I'm not going to be using this one, but this is where you would actually add one if that were the case. Rule usage identifies all rules that have never seen usage in the past 30 days, 90 days, or at all since their creation. In our case, I'm under the unused tab for policies that have never seen usage. So what we can choose to do is delete, enable, or disable these policies with the options down below. I strongly advise you always disable policies before you delete them, as this will allow you to easily revert your changes with an enable as opposed to recreating the policy or walking through rollback steps. In our case, I will be disabling a policy and then annotating why it was disabled in the description so I can have a reference point to look back on when I'm ready to delete it. So in this case, WLAN app ID filter 007 is going to be our policy that we're going to disable. But before I do that, I'm going to click on the policy to open it up. 
put a note in here that says disabled on one slash 22 slash 23. Click OK. And then I'm going to disable this policy. And like I said, when I come back, when it's time to actually delete this policy or any other policies, I can look back in the description of the actual policy and be like, oh yeah, I put that note in there. That's been a safe, um, a safe time frame in which this policy has been disabled. There was no impact to production. Now it is time to remove this policy from my rule base. In conclusion, I hope this video helped you learn how to use the policy optimizer tool and how to leverage this tool within your network. As always, I've included some helpful KBS articles below. Thank you again for watching, and if you have any suggestions, please leave a comment below.